those who are running the club and making the signings, and, and I'd love to know how much in, input Frank Lampard has into that, they will say, well, we've presented you with these players at the cost of a lot of money, so you've got to get the results. And I guess that's fair enough. In the, This is how modern clubs run themselves. He also wanted certain players out of the club, and we're hearing stories about how those players who aren't playing are uh, making things difficult behind the scenes. Don't know how much truth there is there. So let's just analyse what went on on the pitch yesterday. I thought it was right, it was correct, how they set up to start with. And I think you're right, there was an out ball. And actually, for the first, what, five, ten minutes, they were the better mm. side. Probably should have had a penalty, but, you know, these things go for you, these things go against you. But then when Man City tweaked it, and, and at first, Kevin De Bruyne was a number nine. He then dropped into midfield. So effectively, at times, they had a six-man midfield up against a very weak Chelsea three in midfield. And Man City dominated. I mean, it was a masterclass from they Pep Guardiola coaching. Yeah. They were fans. But because they had six against three in midfield, and so then, when the three had been bypassed by Man City's passing, there was a back four that looked like rabbits in the headlights, didn't have a clue what they were doing, and it could have been even more. But what I, what I thought then was, Frank didn't change anything in that first half. I'm not talking about substitutions, I'm talking about beefing up your midfield, dropping your wingers back, you know, just doing something a little bit different to try and counter mm. what Man City were doing. There was nothing there at all. And, and they were scared to death, you could see how many times, you know when you see you want to see your back line staying some kind of formation or mm. whatever it is, yeah, um, and stay compact. Look how deep Thiago Silva kept dropping. He was five, six yards back because they were scared of death at the pace of Manchester City and getting through Chelsea's midfield with that support they've got from De Bruyne and the pace of Sterling. And we switched on numerous occasions. I don't think Sterling got the praise for his performance yesterday. Superb. He was absolutely brilliant. I've heard uh, Gundogan get a load of praise. I've heard De Bruyne. I've heard Bernardo Silva. Silva... Uh, Sterling was outstanding. Mm. Every time he got the ball and he ran at them, they were scared to death of him. It's a little bit like, because um, Gary Neville gave the man of the match to Gundogan and I was really shocked because I thought it should have been De Bruyne. He even said he gets it all the time, De Bruyne. Well, if he is man of the match, give him man of the match. But I, you, Sterling, we're so used to him oh. being brilliant that it kind of bypasses people They were days. scared to death of Sterling. Absolutely yesterday. right. Every time he got the ball, he broke through that midfield. Can't take on and him. He had a mare against Sterling. Sterling absolutely rinsed him. Well, I can't remember in a big game against a big side, Kante playing well. Not since the title winning days. And that's a long time. So, uh, and, and you look at that goal, the De Bruyne goal, where Sterling goes through, hits the post, and it, it falls to De Bruyne. And Golo Kante, all he has to do is make sure the ball goes beyond a Man City player. He can't even do that, and then he's left for dead by Sterling. You know, that's a big decision you've got to make. Should he be in there on his own as a defensive midfielder? Should he be in there at all? But on the evidence we've seen so far this season, it, it, you know, it simply isn't good enough and something has to change. And when you've paid a lot of money for these players, you have to get it right. Do we? Let's have a look at the human side of this, Darren, just for a second. Bearing in mind what we talked about at the start of the show. You've got two players who've come from the Bundesliga who have arrived mid-COVID yep. in a new country. One of them's had COVID. Do we give them any kind of leeway for that, sympathy for that? Because they've arrived in a, a brand new country. Yeah, sure, they've signed the contract and all that, but they've arrived in a brand new country where they're not used to anything. They can't go out. They Ooh, can't do things normally. Do we, should we give, cut them a little bit of slack for that or not? Mm, well... It's only Frank, if, if, if he feels that way, he's going to leave him out, hasn't Correct. he? He's not been yeah. playing Averts, he's been playing Mount. Oh, I think, I, I, even yesterday, I thought Mount was good uh, for a lot of the game. I don't think he did anything bad. I thought Kante had an absolute mare. I didn't think Kovacic were great either. No. Um, Anonymous, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I said, he's got Pulisic, who's coming back from kind of injuries. He's got Zayek coming back from injuries. Adoy coming back from injuries. Um, and Vern has been the one who's played a lot of game time. And you actually, I got the feeling he played him yesterday because he didn't want to leave him out and he wants him to score. He feels, it looks like he feels as though if he can just score one, mm. we'll get a bag full. But how many times have we said that about a striker? And the problem is now, is it a, affecting his selection? Because he's gone Giroud, he's gone Abram, sorry, he's gone Giroud. He's gone back to uh, Abraham. Now he's gone Werner through the middle. So he's got a serious problem who he's going to select the next game. It'd be interesting who he does go with. 